Welcome to Friday Beyond Spotlights. This is Patrick Tsang. I'm a local Hong Kong businessman, entrepreneur, and philanthropist. On Friday Beyond Spotlights, we invite prominent guests to share their unique insights into current affairs, business, innovation, and culture. Today, we're very pleased to have with us Donnie Yen, a worldwide superstar renowned for his roles in the Ip Man series, Hero, and Star Wars Rogue One. Donnie exploded onto the big screens when he starred in his first film, Drunken Tai Chi, in 1984. His career spans 40 years, and he has appeared in nearly 80 movies. Donnie has remained a major figure in Chinese action cinema to this day as actor, director, and supporting other talents behind cameras and spotlights. Donnie, welcome to Friday Beyond Spotlights. Hi, Patrick. Donnie, you are known as Yu Zhao Zhe Kang. Do you know why they call you the strongest, badass fighter of all times? Well, first of all, I, I, I'm not the strongest. Right? I'm just, uh, just like you and I, like everybody else. I'm uh, human. I think probably because I've been in the business for a very long time, and mm -hmm. some of these films uh, represent uh, a heroic uh, character. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess everyone uh, used to see me on screen as a hero. But uh, in reality, I'm just like you and I, just a normal human being. Besides other than being an actor, right? I know yeah. you enjoy directing. I know you enjoy producing yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, which directions are you taking and, and why? And, and what stories basically oh. would you want to be telling? You know, actually, I've been uh, producing and directing for many, uh, many, many years. My first directing debut was back in 1996, 97, when I formed my own the very first uh, film company. I was exploring and had a lot of uh, desires to, to, to want to tell my story. Mm -hmm. right? But of course, as a result, as an immature and inexperienced, inexperienced filmmaker at the time, uh, I ran into a lot of uh, uh, just uh, issues, uh, financial issues. Mm -hmm. As a result, you know, I had a lot of, lot of, lot, of, lot of downside, right? At one point in my bank account, I only had one hundred dollars Hong mm. Kong, and I have to eat the fan hub, the the rice for my producers. Uh -huh. The little fan hub, it cost twenty five dollars, mm -hmm. and I have I didn't even have twenty five dollars to eat my lunchbox, right? At the time, I had other opportunities to to make money, for mm -hmm. example, right? Mm -hmm. But I turned a lot of these films down because I wanted to pursue my own directing projects and turn down all these uh, uh, opportunities to, for, for a better financial situations. When I look back, a lot of people kind of jokingly and said, oh, you should have taken this, this movie or that movie and mm. that movie. Right? I turned down 10 movies, right? But now I look back, I wouldn't do anything different. Let's just put it that way. You know, as in being an artist, sometimes you just have to take a, maybe perhaps a longer route. That was my destiny. At the time, I had to do what I had to do to, to learn from mistakes and continue going forward. Now we always talk about the Greater Bay Area. There are many opportunities that we can uh, see there. Um, how do you see the development uh, with Hong Kong and the Greater Bay Area, and then relating to the revitalization and the renaissance of the local, national, or international film industry? For me, my single goal is to make a movie where most people in the world can, can see the film. I mean, to me, that is um, more important than uh, winning an award or, or having the greatest uh, reviews. Mm -hmm, I think mm -hmm. box office stands for, stand for uh, number one pri priority of each single movies that I do, right? Mm -hmm. We're trying to reach a large audience as much as possible. So obviously, you know, mainland China, having masses of market, Greater Bay Area itself is so many times over larger than Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. So as a filmmaker, we have to focus on that. But as a Chinese filmmaker, as a Chinese actor, I see still many obstacle for us to overcome being Chinese. Why don't we look at uh, internally, after all, we have the biggest market in the world, right? Why not focus ourselves into our own markets? Um, I want to switch topic and talk a little bit about technology, yeah. because nowadays in movie making, there's yeah. a lot of uh, 
technology that yeah. we can see. W- where do you see the future, and how do you use technology right in your production? I think always actor? look at uh, technology as an enhancement. Mm-hmm. I think the main uh, essential of making a uh, a good movie is telling a good story. That's that is the key essential. Mm-hmm. That will never change. To reach an audience in the most uh, effective way is tell a story uh, and having that connect connectivities with the mm-hmm, audience. Mm-hmm. And by having a connect a good connectivities, you need human emotion. When they are emotionally attached to your story, then they will be emotionally invested in your movie. So, Donnie, there are fewer internationally produced uh, movies during the COVID period, but we see our local Hong Kong film industry going strong with movies getting good box office. Um, What is the force behind it, and how do you foresee the development of the Hong Kong film industry? Well, I think COVID obviously uh, hurt every single one of us, right? It affected our life, our family, friends, and every industry in the world. For me, uh, as someone who's been living here, my base is here, uh, my company is here, and in my last 40 years in my career, Hong Kong industry, film industry had uh, created and gave given me this, this great opportunity. So obviously, I want to continue to be uh, able to pay back to our own community Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and able to use my 40 years of experience to continue to make films, not only represent Hong Kong, but as well as represent as a Chinese person, as a Chinese filmmaker. Um, Donnie, clearly you started in Hong Kong. Uh, Your career has spanned over 40 years. Um, Nowadays, uh, all of us, and I see your productions, uh, cooperate a lot with uh, with China and Chinese uh, uh, filmmaking industry. Um, any characteristics or anything you can share with us in terms of working with mainland producers, directors? And- it really depends on the, where my story takes place. And fortunately, uh, many of my story take place in mainland China. And I got to use that as an, a great opportunity to rediscover my own motherland. Because when you make films, you travel everywhere from north to south, from anywhere. So I was able to to really understand uh, making films in mainland China. But at the same time, I, uh, I've been quite fortunate to to given the opportunities to, to make films abroad, abroad as well. Places like in London and North America and everywhere around the world. So quite, I've been quite lucky that way. As an international movie star, right? As you were saying, you have many opportunities to travel around to tell the good story. And clearly, in your various roles, right, you've been promoting the the Chinese yes. culture. Yeah, absolutely. Um, how have the inter- international audience reacted to your roles or this, those stories? Well, it hasn't been easy. I think, as a Chinese actor or filmmaker, uh, it took us many decades, uh, and we're still uh, mm-hmm. trying to break grounds and break rules. There's still a lot of um, Unequal uh, opportunities uh, provided for for Chinese filmmakers. I, I've been trying to break that barrier every single time, mm-hmm. every single movie. Mm. I give you an example. When when I did Rogue One, Star War, in the beginning, the writing was very stereotyped. You know, typical. I I know what they want. You know, mm. for marketing purpose, mm. obviously they want Donnie Yen to show the martial arts, but it's the way they written it. It was uh, still very conservative in a mm. way. Uh, I call it a little bit primitive. You mm-hmm. know, like, okay, a Chinese person, they have no sense of humor. They, you know, they come out and you know, they they can do the martial arts, but then then they are very stoic and very uh, just uh, one uh, cliche shape mm. uh, images, right? So I expressed uh, to Disney as well as everybody on the set, and I said, listen, if you want me to do this movie, first of all this character needs to be a little bit more human. Right? Mm-hmm. He needs to have a sense of humor. I actually uh, fought for changing the lines and changing that little bit of that character and giving him that sense of humor. And I've been doing it every single f- film. And 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 the whole Hollywood industry knows my uh, that if they want Donnie Yen in the film, first of all, they have to be respectful to our Chinese culture. 
they have to uh, understand uh, our Chinese culture. Not only this is my passion in my, in my career, but also I feel a certain responsibility as a Chinese man to use my platform as a filmmaker, as an actor, uh, to represent our Chinese culture or our Chi as a Chinese person in the best light possible. Um, Donnie, we have a lot of uh, younger audience out there. Um, what advice would you give our younger audience if they want to build a career in film, in culture, or the creative industries? As long as you have a breath, you have the opportunities. You'll never give up because you will never know. But, but of course, you need to be prepared. Preparation is really important. That's why hard work is still the fundamental mm. elements of all successful path. I share with all the young people, like whatever you want to pursue, go ahead, go for it, right? We, you're young, you know, you have a lifetime ahead of you. Thank you, Donnie. Thank you. We'll be right back after a short break. Welcome back to Friday Beyond Spotlights. We have with us today, Donnie Yen. Who is Donnie Yen behind the spotlights? Who or what defining moments in his life shaped him into who he is today? Will we get to learn his life model or life ambition? In this show and tell segment, we shall go behind and beyond glaring spotlights as our special guest today, Donnie, shows us an item that has special meaning and significance in shaping him into who he is today with fiercely strong Lion Rock can-do spirit. And perhaps we will get to journey back in time with Donnie to experience some special moments and see how certain moments might have shaped him and may shape us. So Donnie, could you show us this item that you've brought with us today? It's, it's a hand, it's a palm, it has special meaning to you. I think uh, in, in our Chinese culture, we have these uh, right? oh, yes. uh, that defines our life, uh, the entire life. But at the same time, I believe if we work hard and continue to strive forward, we can change our destiny. And, and you change, as a result, you can change the path of, of your life as well. So you mentioned before hard work and yeah. perseverance, right? Um, in your journey, right, have you been helped by, have, have people given you a helping hand? Well, of course, the first person I have to, in recent years, of, of course, is my wife. Mm. You know, I'm a very lucky person, uh, able to find my soulmate. And uh, like they all say, you know, a, a successful man, you got to have a, a a very capable woman behind you. Donnie, can we spend a moment to talk about legacy? Um, share with us what legacy you want to leave behind or the tough training that you've gone through, what lessons you want to pass to the next generation. Uh, I started martial arts training when I was nine years old. My mom, uh, she retired now, of course, but she was a very prominent and famous martial arts instructor. And we have a school, uh, I spent many years in living in Boston and she had school in Boston and students. So uh, I was exposed to martial arts, but never thought one day I'd become an actor. And in the beginning, uh, as an actor, I had no idea what it is. And I didn't understand what it means to be an actor, what it means to be a filmmaker, until decades later. And I realized the power of uh, being in this type of industry. And for the longest time, I understand that's my destiny. Uh, like I said, I, I don't know anything else. You know, I spent 40 years. So there must be something that's calling me uh, to use this platform to do goods. So I don't want to call it legacy because I'm, like I said, you know, I'm just like human uh, another human being like you and I and everybody else, right? But I do understand this is my role. My role as a filmmaker, beside is my career, and I enjoy it very much. You gotta have passion to be in the film industry, or else you will quit. But at the same time, I know the essence as a filmmaker. I must 
I must carry that kind of uh, a core values in my movies. And I want to continue to do, do so. When I still have that influence, I want to continue to make films that bring out positivities, uh, to uh, hopefully inspire more and more mm. uh, other people. When they watch my film, oh, they can understand, oh, this is, this is Donnie Yen, that's what he did, right? And, and from my artistic uh, value, I hope to leave uh, this knowledge or perhaps a little bit of wisdom from my 40 years of making movies, especially action movies, that I can pass on. I'm really, they, I've been asked many times, like, uh, have you taken the students and how do you pass the torch? How do you teach? The, for me, uh, that is not the most effective way to, 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 uh, to pass on your knowledge because I can open up a school or students, but the greatest uh, influence is making a influential movie and you can impact uh, so many. For example, when I did, I did four Ip Men in a span of 12 years. And sometimes I have fans come up to me across the world. And I, mean, I was in Kenya, in mm. Africa. They, would, they couldn't even speak English, but they would look at me and say, oh, Ip Man, and, blah, blah, blah. Oh. and many examples like that. Then I tell myself, oh, I must have done something okay. Within the Donnie household, do you try to instill that sense of uh, culture or artistic or creativity for your children? I came from a very traditional fa Chinese family. My father and my mother were separated at the time. My mom was in, in Guangzhou mm -hmm. and my father had to work all the time. And I was raised by my grandmother. In our Chinese tradition, uh, we were not very affectionate, but I wanted to adapt that uh, the modern way of communications, right? Mm -hmm. By showing more affections. And that's, I just hug my kids. Uh, I still hug my kids many times a day. And, and I try to be as open-minded as possible and let them pursue their dreams and, and support whatever they want to do, whatever that makes them happy. That's, that's what I want. And to have you about. taken them back to, to the Kings Park or, or the, the site where you grew yes. up? Yes, no, not only that, I the take them to uh, uh, Guangzhou. I try to uh, dig back where I was born. I take them to uh, my grandfather's uh, uh, and yep. show them where this is your roots. So Donnie, as we reflect on the past and introspectively look at how Hong Kong or the world is today and gaze into the future, What's in store for us? Of course, I wish uh, Hong Kong well, and I quite confident that we will overcome many obstacles. Uh, I believe Hong Kong is a folk day, and I look forward for Hong Kong to reprise itself once again to be one of the best cities in the world. Young people having the opportunities to pursue their dreams and uh, finding a good job, you know, uh, enjoy Hong Kong being the food center of the world. You know, all of that, that makes Hong Kong great. And I wish Hong Kong well. Now we've come to our rapid fire segment where we get up close and personal with our guests. So Donnie, are you ready? I'm just gonna Shoot ask away. you some questions <laughs> and you can tell me the first thing that comes up okay. in your mind. All right. So what's your favorite comfort food? Oh, gotta have a cheeseburger. Exercise and sports, your favorite sport? Probably uh, my martial arts. Um, what's your first job? I actually worked in a tofu place. Jing tofu. Oh, making tofu. Yeah, yes. Very, very, no, very difficult. Very <laughs> I was 14 years old. Um, guests coming to Hong Kong, where would you take them for food? There's, there's everywhere. You can eat great food and there's no place like, like Hong Kong. Is there a favorite martial arts movie? I have to say, Probably eat man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if if uh, theoretically yeah. Bruce Lee versus Ip Man, who would win? I I don't think Bruce Lee would uh, disrespectful to his Hui Ke Si Fu. Right, we yes. we we're Chinese, you know. Yep. We're very uh, respectful to our elderly. You enjoy playing hero or villain? Probably hero now, as as older I get, because my kids would say, "Oh, you know, you did something wrong, uh, Baba." <laughs> so don't be bad. Any hidden talent that you have that people don't know of? I can play classical piano. Any favorite piece? 
I used to love playing Chopin, but I haven't been able to practice because uh, I've just been busy. Dexterity of the fingers help with your martial arts move? I think they all go hand in hand, you know. So everything is, is there's, a, there's a rhythm to it. What's your proudest moment? Oh, there's so many, so many. Of course, when I got married and uh, my daughter was first born and my son got into a good school or my daughter got into a good school. Those are the, so many proud moments. What's the nicest thing someone has said to you? My wife said she married me. <laughs> <laughs> what was the last thing you searched online? Uh, restaurants. Yes, last night I, I went to a, a Tan Thai girl with my wife and oh, I was looking excellent. for a good restaurant. What would be the title of your autobiography? Donnie Yen's Boring Life. <laughs> <laughs> what qualities do you most admire in your parents? The traditional Chinese values which they uh, taught on to me. What's your greatest fear, Donnie? Greatest fear is uh, making a bad movie. What advice would you give your younger self? Don't make the same mistake again. <laughs> <laughs> Donnie, can you share your well wishes for Hong Kong? I wish everyone in Hong Kong uh, healthy, uh, happy, and most of all, uh, a brighter future. Thank you for joining us on Friday Beyond Spotlights. See you next time. Donnie, thank you for being on Friday Beyond Spotlights. Would you like to share with us your next movie or next project? I haven't been directing for over, over a decade. So my latest projects uh, I directed and produced it is Tino Babo Kyu Hongju. If you guys like Yiman, hopefully you're going to like this as well. We certainly look forward to it. Thank you so much.